Hey everybody, it's Comphelp. Thank you for watching this video, which is part 7 of my 3D Studio Max series for beginners. Uh, you've learned a ton already, and now what we're going to do in this video is actually dive into splines more shapes and uh, start controlling them more, start modeling with them, kind of, uh, you know, getting the hang of these things because they're a whole nother beast on their own. And, uh, you know, they, they may be helpful. I don't know. You know, they're really cool because you can get really unique shapes and uh, modeling you can model unique things from these. So let's go ahead and grab our create tab. And we're going to go into the shapes tab or button. Go down to splines, make sure it's on splines, and click circle. Now we want to make this in the front view. Now remember, depending on which view you make everything in, that is going to affect the way it looks in the perspective view, which is the final view of your uh, project, I guess you could say. So look at I'm making this in the front view. Look how it turns out in the perspective view. If I make it in the top view, it now like lays down, lies down. And if I make this in the left view, it, you know, everything, it just, it's just made in a whole nother way. So let me go ahead and rotate around. And you can see that right there. So the front view is what I want because we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to use something to make a hose, a water hose kind of a thing. So let me select those two that I don't need. And there we go. We are back with our front view circle. Now let me go ahead and give you guys a little challenge. What if we want to grab this shape and what if I want to move this to make it on top of this grid line? How would you do that? Hopefully what you've done is you've selected it, first of all, and press W. And maybe you're using all of your viewports here and maybe you're using your front viewport here and you're moving it to this solid line right here. See how it moves? Look at the perspective view. It was like this before. It's through the grid. Me, personally, I have a case of uh, CDO, which is OCD in alphabetical order, the way it should be. And I move this to the top of that hard line there. Okay? So, I mean, yeah, I always like to work on top of that grid line. I don't know why. We can even get rid of the grid by pressing G. But uh, I, I like the grid just for now to keep ourselves organized. Uh, just in the beginning while we need it for, uh, you know, these beginning tutorials. So, anyways, so you guys can kind of have a sense of where you are. Otherwise, if I start moving around, I'm like, and you guys are kind of like, whoa, where, where is he in space? Well, oh, there he is. Okay. So anyways, there we go. Now, I don't want to make this shape so big. So how do I adjust that size? Well, hopefully, you've pressed R and, you know, size this down. I want this kind of small. And now I can press W and, you know, bring it back down to the grid. There you go. There's a little practice to uh, move your shapes around. Great. All right, so I'm going to go over to the top view now, and I'm going to actually make a line. This is going to be the way the circle follows the path. Uh, this is going to be the way our hose looks. Now, we're not going to make it all intricate and fold it and stuff. We're just going to, very simple, make a line. Now, the line tool, if you've ever used Photoshop, works sort of like that. What we can do is click, let go, and you can see, you know, now we're making our line. Now, if you click and drag, we can make a curve, okay? And we can, you know... There we go. So practice with that. Okay. So let me delete this and let me go ahead and make another line. So just kind of make a, a wide, oops, let me make a wide angled uh, line here. Oops. I'm in also graphic right here. Let me go back to the top view. There we go. All right. So anyways, just make a kind of wide path. Okay. Something like that. Right click to get out of that command and it'll end your line. Great. Now, we don't want the circle to be huge. Okay, let me just move this up really quick. We don't want the circle to be huge because let's say let's say the circle is too big for that line. It's going to start overlapping on itself and it's not going to look good at all. So I'm actually going to size this uh, circle down a bit more. Just about like that. Great. So I've taken four minutes of your life making this. What do we do with this now? I'm going to go over to the top view. I like working in all my viewports. Sorry about that if I'm moving around a lot. But uh, just get used to that because that's really how you start working as you get better at this program. Let's go to the top view. Select this path. This is what I'm going to call the path because that's what the object is going to follow. Okay, or the uh, that's what the shape is going to follow. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the create tab and go down to right here, geometry. Bring down standard primitives and go down to compound objects. We have something called loft. Click loft. And if you think about it, we already have our path selected. So what we need to do is get our shape. So click shape, get shape. 
and go to perspective view, whichever viewport is best for you, and click on your shape. Boom. So you'll see it's kind of overlapping itself right there. It does not look good at all. So all I did here was went into loft. Okay, it was kind of closed. Open that up, go to shape, make sure that's selected. Go into your viewport, make sure uh, shape is selected. So select it, making sure that shape is still highlighted. And now you can, you know, resize it. It's really great. You can even resize it in one, one axis, you know. This depends what you're going for. Okay. So, I mean, there you go. And we, we can make it skinny and such. Great. Let's go to path, line. This is where it gets fun. Uh, let's go over to the spline. Okay. And now if we go to spline. Oh, you know what? No, no, no. Let's go to vertex. Yeah, that's a lot better. Let's go to vertex. Make sure that's selected. And select one of these verte vertice points. See this one right here? Uh, if we highlight all of them, we had one right here, one right there, and one here. And those are the original ones that we made um, from our line tool. Remember that? So let's go ahead and select one of these vertice points. I'm going to go over to my perspective view, press W, and now I can bring this down and check that out. Now I can start adjusting the way this looks in general. And then if I grab, let's say, one of these green things here, I can even adjust like different angles and such. There's so much that you can do with this stuff. It's, uh, it's pretty crazy the way you can control all that. Okay, you can even adjust the segment or a segment, which is just a line, part of the line. Okay, let me go over. Let me go over that stuff then right now because I kind of filled in that part. Um, let me reset. No, yes. Kind of a long video, guys, but uh, bear with me, right? Let's go to shapes, line. I'm just going to make a simple line with three parts to it. If I go to the modify panel, we can go to our line, and this is actually sub object mode. If I click vertex, you now see that we have three vertice points. I should have showed this to you before, and I apologize for not doing this. Um, you can actually move each of these vertice points to adjust the way the line looks. Okay? So, yeah, that's, that's that. Um, go to segment, and this is when you start selecting these line parts of it, okay? And that's when you start adjusting those. And you can change the angle of everything, and, you know, that's the way that works. And spline is the whole thing. It's the whole line itself, okay? So just keep that in mind. You can change all the vertice points and stuff. Now there's one more thing I want to show you with with these lines, okay, or these shapes. Delete this. Uh, delete. Okay. Let's go back to shapes. I'm just gonna make a line, and this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my front view, okay. I'm gonna Alt W this, and this is very important, okay. See this hard line? Bring it down, middle mouse button, and bring it down to about the bottom. And what you want to do is actually keep on that line there, okay. What we can actually do is let's snap toggle, um, snap to a vertex or a grid point. There we go. I snap to a grid point. Okay. All I did was right click and I went to grid points, check mark grid points, and turn on snaps. Now you can see that I'm snapping to these grid points. It's very, very important here that you snap to this middle grid point or this rough edge right here. Okay, because what we're going to do is actually make a line and we're going to revolve it around to make something. We're going to model something here. Hopefully something that looks similar to a pot. Okay, so click S, take off my snaps. That's the shortcut key for that snaps up there. So you can press S, you know, you see it's like toggling on and off. There we go. So now it's not snapping. Um, now I want to make something that kind of looks like a pot. Okay, there we go and click let go all right how the feezy how does this look like a pod jerry i don't get what you mean all right if we revolve this simple line let me go back here's my perspective view if we revolve the simple line 360 degrees or at least yeah 360 degrees it's going to make a 3d object right let me go ahead and show you what i mean here select this line there i'm gonna press j i hate that i hate that outline there uh, I'm going to go to my modify panel here and bring down something called lathe. Boom. All right, Jerry, what the heck did we just make? Why is it all dark? Dark is not good. And you can see what we've done in the front view and in the left view. 
Okay, so what have we done here? Uh, you can see it's all dark, and you can see that we've actually rotated this in the front view and the left view. I mean, it's obviously rotated, right? But it's rotated in the wrong way. Um, let's go down over to the align and hit min. Boom, there we go. You can see what we've done. We have actually made, remember the line kind of followed the path like that. We've rotated it, so now it makes ourselves a shape, which is very, very interesting. We could even, uh, you know, take down the degrees how much it, uh, how much it rotates. Okay, right here, 360 is fine though. And if we look at the bottom, see how it looks all corrupted right there. Let's click weld core really quick, and there we go. Now we've fixed that. Okay, um, you don't want that to look like that. It looks all that's crap. So turn on weld core, and we should be good. All right. So. Wow, you know, we've made ourselves a 3D shape using that hard line right here. What it did is we made our our line on this intersection, right? And what it did is it rotated on that hard line, on that hard grid line. And so as long as you don't go past that line, your shape should turn out awesome, okay? Now this is where it gets pretty cool. Um, what we can do is go down to line, okay? And you can see our original line. And what we can do is hit vertex, and now we can start moving these vertice points. And this is when I'm going to start rotating stuff. You should know what I'm doing by now, you know. And if I go ahead and go back up to lathe, you can see our pot looks totally different. Okay, um, let's go back down to the line, and I'm going to give you guys a little nice uh, tip here. See this test tube kind of a thing? That's show end result on. We can click that, and we can actually see what it looks like. Um, the end result. So if I start moving these two vertice points, you can see how it gets affected there. Move this one point. Look at that. Start shaping our uh, our pot. Start making some pretty cool things here. See that there? So I mean, that's pretty cool. Now this video is turning out way too long, and I just wanted to show you guys those uh, these simple things that you can actually start modeling with uh, these shapes and such. Trust me, you want to practice with these. Start making new shapes. Um, actually, this is how um, I made one of my 3D logos. Um, so, I mean, you actually start... Remember I did the extrude, I think, in the last video? I, I made a line, and, uh, you know, you can start making out letters or whatever. Close it, and then extrude it, and, you know, you have that shape there, or whatever you need. Um, what you also have is, like, a text shape. So, I mean, you can... Dude, you know... And there you go. But I mean, yeah, just shapes, really, really important. You might want to keep those in mind. So there you go. Hope you've learned something. You've learned how to kind of control these shapes by using the vertice points, the edges, um, the segments, I mean. And uh, yeah, really important. Practice up with these because trust me, you're going to be moving vertices a lot in the future. Trust me. All right, so thank you for watching this video. Please thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. 15 minutes this video was. I'm very sorry about that. All right, I'll see you later in part eight.